that growth is, is noticeable to you. you. You notice how it goes. But for those of us who um, see them periodically, we are, we are literally astounded by, by, what we, by what we see. Those yeah. of you that are, that are in the house, you, you see it regularly. You, you know that the food bill is going up. You, you know that the, the clothing bill has changed. You recognize those feet that were once one size and now totally another size. So you see that on a regular basis. But for those of us who don't, we are literally astounded by how much growth we've seen in these last six months. Uh, when, I, when I look at Miles and Madison and Michael Mills and Daniel just a couple of weeks ago, um, I've seen Jalen Booker, I've seen Jay and, and Chris Jackson. Um, and I saw CJ, the grandson of Rodney Lino, we saw him a few days ago. And of course, Sugar and I see Corey and, and Kobe and and uh, it's amazing to watch them, watch them grow. So uh, we're noticing some of them are growing faster than others. Some are not, maybe not as fast as others. But there are changes that are taking place in them, showing that growth. It's the same idea that we look at when we consider faith and the process of faith. When we, when we read, for the most part, the Bible characters, that we celebrate in the Bible, whether it's Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, David, Moses, all of those characters that we read, often, oftentimes we look at them in the fullness of their faith. We look at yeah. them as those mature persons, Sarah and Hannah and all of them. We see them in their full yeah. maturity. And, and sometimes we wonder, can we, can we ever achieve that? Can we ever get to that point that our faith is exercised and demonstrated and practiced in the way their faith is. Well, the truth of the matter is we can. Mm -hmm. and, and the truth of the matter, for the most part, we do. For the most part, we are because faith involves a process. It, it is not something in terms of trust in God, belief in God, reliance upon God. It's not like you trust Jesus as your Savior one day and you are totally, right, fully, right. absolutely mature, ready for every situation, ready for every circumstance. It is a process. Uh, the NBA, the NBA had, had a team, I won't, I won't mention the name, that, that had a slogan at one time, they would say, trust the process. Uh, unfortunately, that process so far has not worked for them. Whatever, whatever their intentions were, it has failed miserably in its in its the results of it. But but when it comes to the issue of faith, we can trust the process. We we can trust the process because there is a literally a journey that we are on that. God has a way of growing us up from one event, from one situation, from one circumstance of life to another until we all come, as Paul would say in Ephesians chapter 4, until the fullness of the faith in Jesus Christ. So, so faith for us is a process. And so when we look at the character this morning of Abram, uh, when we meet Abram in Genesis chapter 11, he is the son of Terah. The Bible says that Terah moves his family from Ur of the Chaldeans and moves to a place called Ur. Uh, I'm sorry, he moves them again to Haran. And when they're in Haran, the Bible says that there, that's when God reveals himself to Abram. And he says to Abram, I want you to leave your father and I want you to leave your people, yeah. and I want you to go to a land that I will show you. First of all, that journey from Ur of the Chaldeans to Haran was over 600 miles. That would be like walking from Houston to Amarillo, Texas. They, they would travel a day's journey, was known as about a 20 mile journey. So, so you have to believe that this journey of 600 miles will literally have taken them two months more than likely to travel because they're traveling with people, they're traveling with livestock. They don't, they don't have the four wheels that we have, four wheel drive. And, 
and rear wheel drive and front wheel drive. They didn't have the horsepower that we travel with. So that travel was different now. They have to travel 600, over 600 miles to get into Haran, but then God says to him again, I want you to leave there and I want you to go to a country that I will show you. When he left with Terah, his father, to Haran, he knew exactly where he was going. All right. But when God says, I want you to go to a land that I will show you, that that's just not enough information. Yeah. But the reality is because, because of this 600 mile journey that he had already taken, now he has taken a, another journey that is going to be well over possibly 800 to 900 miles as he winds up in Egypt in chapter 13 because of the famine that was in the land. God said in chapter 12, I'm going to bless you and I'm going to make you a great nation and you all of the families of the earth are going to be blessed. And then in chapter, at the end of chapter 13, if you would look at verse number 14, it says, and the Lord said to Abram after Lot had separated him, lift your eyes now and look for the place where you are, are northward, southward, westward, eastward, and westward. All, right. all the land which you see I give to you and your descendants forever. What was amazing about that is that all of the land that God was saying that he was going to see is that for the most part in his journey from Haran all the way through Egypt in chapter 13, he had literally seen that land already. God yeah. brings him yeah. from Egypt and he takes him into the area called Mamre. And, uh, and in that area, he, the Bible says that God says to him again, I want you to look to the east, the west, the north, and the south. And as far as you can see, this is the land that I'm going to give you. And listen, here is what I want to share with you. When we're in a process of faith, one of the things we've got to know is that God makes um, unimaginable promises. Let me say that again. God makes unimaginable promises. Can you imagine if into any intent that Abram could have believed all of the lands that he had already traveled, all of the places that he had already gone from Ur of the Chaldeans to Haran, all the way into Egypt and now back into Canaan in the land of Mary. The Bible is literally saying that I'm going to give you, can he even imagine that God would give him that land and at that time he still does not have a child. And what I'm trying to tell us is that in this process of faith, God gives you and I some unimaginable yeah. promises. Yeah, yeah. Come on, help me. Yeah. When you think about you think about John 3.16, for God was so, so loved. loved the world that he, what, he gave his only begotten son. Here is the unimaginable promise that whoever would believe in him would not perish but would have everlasting life. Y'all, that's just an unimaginable promise. When you think in light of Romans chapter 3 saying that the Bible clearly says that there's none righteous, there's none who understand, there's none who seeks God, but then Jesus comes on the scene and he says if you would just believe, he didn't say that you had to build a house, he didn't say you had to build a car, he didn't say that you had to travel 900 miles, all he said is that you just believe you will not perish, but you will have everlasting life. I'm telling y'all, that's yes, a long imaginable yes, Thank you, God. When, when, I, when, I, when, I, when I read the Bible and I look at the book of Romans, I tell y'all, I'm just amazed at God's love. When I read in Rome, at the end of Romans chapter 8, what the word of God says, he says, what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? I'm talking about unimaginable promises. Did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How will he not again deliver him also freely give us who delivered him also freely give us all things? Notice, here's the promise. Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who yes. died and yes. who is also risen. Who is even at the right hand of God who makes intercession for us, who shall separate us 
from the love of Christ, your tribulation, or distress, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword, as it is written, for in your sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet is the promises, y'all. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. No angels, no principalities, no powers, no things present, no things to come, no any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. King 
the, the I, I'm having a problem with that name, but 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 y'all understand the chapter 14 verse one. It was Kedar Lama Lamor. Here he is, a king of four coalition. That that coalition now is over another coalition of five kings, and those five kings and and now have placed themselves under the suzerain uh, uh, authority of that king. And so watch now, the Bible says that they were doing good for about 12 years, yes, and then after 12 years, they decided to rebel. All right. Abram has no idea this is going on, but that's what's happening. When they did rebel, the Bible says that the four kings uh, uh, under this king, they decided now that they weren't going to stand for the fact that the five other kings were going to rebel against them. So what did they do? They actually came against those five kings that were more south of them, and the Bible says that they overtook them to the point that they even overtook Sodom and Gomorrah. And when they overtook Sodom and Gomorrah, uh, uh, Abram's nephew Lot was one of the inhabitants of the of Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah, and the yeah. Bible says he took them, took their children, took their women, and they took all of their possessions. Now yeah. remember, Abram is just doing what the Lord told him to do. He's yeah. built this tent, he's set up in memory, he's in Hebrew, just doing what the Lord said, minding his own business, but in the process of faith, God now allows him to be a part of a problem that he never asked for. Yeah, yeah, yes. I don't know about you all that learned yes. in this process of faith. God will place people oh, yeah. and places and problems in your life that you never asked for. Can I get anybody? Yeah. Anybody that has me to know that you didn't ask for this, but just because yeah. God is God, he will place some stuff in your life Jesus. that you wonder why in the Jesus. world am I going through all of this? Yes. It's all because God is taking you through a process of faith. Yeah. These kings now, they, they are in war. They are going from being a coalition that's going now to be chaos and they are warring against each other and when they come now, they capture Lot and his family and all of the possessions that he had. Look again at verse 11 of chapter 14. It says then they took all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah and all their provision and with that way they also took Lot, Abram's brother, son brother's son who dwelt in Sodom and his goods and departed. Yeah. Then one, verse 13, who had escaped came and told Abram and Hebrew for, uh, for he dwelt at the turban tree of Mamre the Amorite brother of Eshcol, the brother of Anna, and they were allies to Abram. Now, when Abram heard that his brother was taken captive, oh. he owned 318 trained servants who were born in his house yeah. and went in pursuit as far as day. Let's yeah. stop there. Watch that. Watch that. Watch that. He is minding his business. Preach. Now God has presented to him a problem he wasn't looking for. Yes, so, yes. How, how many of you can attest to the fact that, that you've been on a job with a boss you didn't ask for? How, how many of you, how many of you will attest that you've been in some relationships that at, at the beginning you say you know it was the Lord that put y'all together, but all of a sudden that thing get all twisted and crazy and you ask yourself, how in the world did I get myself into this? Situation. No, I your own business, and all of a sudden you get a call from a relative that starts telling you all the problems they got, and all of a sudden now their problem becomes your problem. Can I get somebody to help me in here? That is the process of faith because we grow best in that process. God plays some full. Some people that Abram had nothing, he knew nothing about them, but God placed them in his life as a means of the process of his faith. What I'm trying to tell you, when God does that, don't get angry at him, don't get mad at him. 
because you've already discovered that every person that God has put in your life, every place that God has taken you, every problem that God has allowed you to have, when you look back on it, you recognize it actually took all of that to get you to where you are right now. That's the only reason that you're trusting like you're trusting because he allowed you to have some problem, but he brought you out of that problem. And in some cases, he didn't bring you out of that problem, but he let you to learn how to deal with the problem, even though he didn't remove the problem. And now when you look back on it, you can say, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, where would I be? He had a process. And then, and then, in the midst of all of that, God grants unusual power. Notice, notice again. Notice, notice that that verse that we just read. Uh, in, 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 again, in verse, in verse number 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 fourteen, Abram heard that his brother was taken captive. Yes. Right. His brother, his brother's son, Lot. He's now seeing it as his brother. He has been taken captive. And I know sometimes, y'all, that there's some relatives in your life you would just prefer to say, Lord, I wish they were just whatever that, whatever that, whatever you think. I'm not going to fill it in for them. But God leaves them in your life as a way of growing you up and maturing you and helping you to get where you need to be. Listen, listen, think about it. Six months ago, there's none of us asked for this COVID-19. This day. But isn't it amazing that six months later we got to admit the Lord has been good to us? We have not lost our mind. That some folk that have tested positive, but God has lifted them up. Unfortunately, there are some people that have died, but God will show us that I know how to process your faith, and no matter what comes up, I can get you where I need you to be. And if you, if you measure normally it's one inch to two inch. 
And when you start to notice where the war started in the area of Hebron or the area of Ed, uh, where, where the, those armies began to attack, I'm sorry, in the issue, issue of the area of Sodom and Gomorrah, when you began to, 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 yes. to measure that, yes. you can literally see 200 to 300 miles that he is now following the enemy that had already taken all that belonged to Lot yes. along with Lot, but God gave him, watch the energy, God gave yes. him the strength, yes. God gave those 322 the yes. power yes. to be able to overcome what looks seem to be an insurmountable situation, y'all. What I'm trying to tell y'all, COVID-19 appears to be an insurmountable situation, but you got to know, and you got to already know, six months later, the God that you serve can give you unusual
something to do with it. Notice that the man in the mix. Give me the people. You can take the possession. What did you do? To contribute to the victory. What did you do? To be able to give some demands in a situation that God is totally in control of. But Abram said to the king of Sodom, Sodom, mm. I have raised my hand to the Lord God most high, the possessor of heaven and earth. Mm. Verse 23, that's why we're going to go. That I will take nothing from a thread mm. to a sandal strap. <laughs> no, I ain't taking nothing from you. No, all right. And the reason I'm not going to do it is that I will not take anything that is yours, lest you say, uh -huh. I have made Abram Rich. That's a lot of talk, y'all. All right. Yeah. Miraculous vaccine. Mm -hmm. A lot of talk about <laughs> medications. Yeah. A, lot of, a lot of talk yeah, yeah, yeah. about what science is doing. Yes, sir. But I believe we all say at the end of the day. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If anybody deserves the credit, yeah. Yeah. It, it ought to be the Lord. Yeah. Some, some of you know where you've been. You, yeah. you, you have been in science. In terms of who he is, in order for us to understand. 
understand a little bit better. Go to Hebrews chapter 7 for me, just for just a moment. Ah, God. Hebrews chapter 7, and we'll be closing shop. Hebrews chapter 7. In Hebrews chapter 7, we've got a wonderful description. Ah, by the talks about Melchizedek in chapter verse 1, it says, For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the most high God, mm -hmm. who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being translated by his king of righteousness. Yes. That's what his name was, the king of Righteous. righteousness. And then, and then he was, and then he was also king of Salem, meaning king of peace. All right, right. Without father, without mother, without genealogy, having me the beginning of days, no end of life, mm. but made, here it is, y'all, like the Son of God. Yes. He remains a priest continually. Watch his way show, his way show. This is, this is wonderful. Melchizedek shows up on the scene after this great victory, and he affirms who Abram believed in. All right. In that he told him that he was God most high. Yeah. El Elyon. Mm -hmm. In other words, we know we live in a society, Abram would say, where there are many gods. But there's only one God yeah. who's God yeah. most high. Yeah, yeah. And then he describes him as the possessor of heaven and earth. Yeah. Meaning that he created everything. And everything that he created, he controls. All right. so, so he blessed him, the Bible says, and reminded oh, him. Y'all, isn't it good? Isn't it good to know that you're not the only one that's trusted in God? Yeah. Isn't it good to know that God has given you a community of faith, of people yeah. that believe what you believe? Yeah. And isn't it good to know that you can hear them say something and you can say amen? Uh -huh. Because it affirms that the same God that you believe yeah. in is the same God that they yeah. believe in. And we celebrate today yeah. the fact that just as Abram believed God, God most high through Melchizedek, we thank God that we believe in God most high. Why? Because of his son, yeah, the yeah, Lord yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah. Our faith is always affirmed. Our faith is made stable. Yeah. Our faith is made steadfast. Why? Because we believe in the unique person of the Son of God. Yes, yeah. sir. And today, y'all, if, if you're not sure about anything, yes, you got to be convinced this process of faith yes, sir. will not be what it is. If it were not for Jesus, yes, sir. oh, it's one thing to say you believe in God. Thank you, God. But you understand the reason you believe in God is because He gave His only begotten Son. Then yeah. His Son gave His life. Yeah. 
to be the ministry and what has been presented to us on today. God, we pray that as we move forward, we will still remember the Lord's death until he comes again. Yes. The sacrament that you have given yes. us, this thank ordinance you, that you have given us, thank God, observe both that of baptism thank and you. that of the Lord's table. Is what we recognize for this day, October 4th, 2020. We pray, God, that you would help us to examine our own selves to make sure that we're not out of line yes. with our brothers and our sisters so that we yes. can eat and drink in a worthy manner. Yes. We ask again for the forgiveness of our sins yes. that you would allow us just as privilege to share yes. what you are doing yes. so that it will say thank you. We give you all the honor and the praise of the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. All we pray to say amen. 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 Share you know, just just disseminate the, uh, the, the the bread and the wine to those who need it. Amen. Again, get ready at your homes. Those of you that know what you are doing, let's get ready to have your family today. You know that our formalities that we used to, but uh, at the end of the day, what we want to do, we want to take it to reference, we want to take it to respect, we want to take it to acknowledging that God is Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for your blood, God. Thank you for your blood. Thank you for your blood. Thank you 
you so much again, those that are giving that offering. We thank you so much again for those extended family members who call us and say, hey man, I would like to give or we would like to thank give to the church. Lord. What do we need to do? Father, thank you for those gifts yes. uh, that you've given for the expansion yes. of your kingdom and yes. the spread of your gospel. Uh, we thank you again for every financial resource that you have blessed the Good Shepherd Church with. And then, well, not only our church, but every church uh, that continues to uh, serve and to do the things that you call for us to do yes, in this situation that yes, we're currently Lord. in. We thank you for it all in Jesus' thank name. We pray. Amen. 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 All right. Just as a, a reminder for us, we've got uh, our birthdays. Uh, we're four persons this week. I would clap if y'all would help me out. Felvin Stevens, Clyde Berry Sr., Keith Mobley, and Anita Baker. Definitely not everybody. 
can expand this a little bit more, but, but I want to start with those of you who say, I just need to be back. I just need to do that. So if you get to your call this week, 713 672 9847, and just tell her, Yes, I want to, I want to come back. And just let me give you some further instructions. I probably look at something the third Sunday of this month, possibly, possibly. But when I say anything, definitely, but possibly, we're going to see how things are transpiring uh, as we go through. What, 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 what seems to be another wave that may be going on, we don't know yet, uh, but a time is going to reveal that to us, and so let's keep praying until then. Um, I'm going to be with the brothers on the conference call for today, so we're going to ask that you would uh, do that. Let's say we're going to start at 10.40, I said 10.40, uh, 10 and we're going to go for 40 minutes, uh, and drill, and also for myself as it relates to the Sunday school for today. So let's stand for y'all. Uh, let's pray. I, uh, I, I was talking to Pastor Johnson uh, a couple of days ago, maybe yesterday, I forgot who was. And I told Phil, I said, I said, Pastor, I told him, I said, man, this is a, we're, we're getting a gut check for our Christianity right now. I say, because uh, if anybody is refusing to pray for President Trump, I'm going to just say that's a poor Christian. Yeah, it is. I'm not saying you're not Christian, <laughs> but I'm going to say that's a poor Christian. Yeah. Uh, the Bible clearly tells us that we don't even love our enemies. Yes, right. yes. And so we're getting a gut check right now. We are getting a serious check in terms of do we, do we believe what we say we believe as it relates to the Word of God? Because we're talking about faith, right? Yes. It's not about our feelings, it's about our faith. faith yeah. And our faith goes along with what? Our obedience to the word of God. Yeah. I think I sent out a text, a scripture to you all that yeah. reminded us we're not to be glad when an enemy stumbles. Right. We're not to be glad when somebody we may not get along with falls. We're not to celebrate that in yeah. any way. Uh, because the Bible says that that displeases God. Now, yeah. first up, you all read verse 18 of Proverbs chapter 24. It actually says that he may return. Uh, he may relent and, and turn his wrath. And the implication is this, that it displeases him to the point that he may turn his wrath against that person and turn it toward you. Because that decision to hate somebody is not in congruence with the character of God. God is God's love. It's God's love. We are to love. He reminds us even in Romans chapter 12. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him joy. If he's naked, you are close him. God is a God of love. That's the message that you and I will be encountering in these days. Father, how we love you and thank you for being the loving God that you are, for loving us. Even in our own mess. Thank you, Lord. For loving us even when we don't do what we ought to be doing. For loving us when we don't say what we ought to yes, say. Yes, yes, For loving us sometimes when we put our fists in your face and say, hey, we know you're not, but we can do what we ought to do anyhow. So, God, we ask you to thank you for your forgiveness for us. Thank you. And so, even as we stand here today, those persons that we mentioned by name, we ask that you, we lift them up before you and ask your grace and your mercy be upon the land we're in with. You don't just get ready to face on Tuesday with the defibrillator God who has the healing in his body. We pray for Milton, who is uh, recovering from his amputation. We pray for Ty uh, Berry, who's going through the radiation of the yes. cancer that is in his body. Yes, Lord. We were coming up on literally four Great years, three God. years for uh, Carolyn and her situation. And so we just lift them all before you, God, and ask your grace and your mercy for each and every one of our members. Not only members of this church, but members of the body of Christ Thanks. universally and locally. Yes. Uh, and then, Lord, we do pray for the President of the United States yes, and for yes, his God. life. Yes, we do ask again for healing. We yes, know you can. Yes. We ask for recovery according to your Jesus. divine will. Yes. Uh, we don't know what you're doing. We don't fully understand everything you're doing. But we know that this world is yours. Yes. Lord, we are going to obey what you yes. have told yes. us to do as yes. your children, yes. regardless of the circumstances of, of our feelings. We want to make sure that we exercise in our faith. Yes. Now to you, Lord, who's able to do exceedingly yes. abundantly for all that you could ask and think to the only wise God, who has both dominion and power you got it now and you have it forever. We see you, we give all the honor yes. and the praise in Jesus' name. Jesus name. All who agree say amen. 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 amen.
bless you all. We'll see you all again. We all will see me again on Wednesday for our Bible studies at the light. We pray that you continue to be a blessing. Don't forget, don't do social distancing. Do physical distancing. There's enough social distance already. Let's just make sure that we are physically distancing ourselves from each other. Amen? God bless you until we meet again.